Hello and welcome to the Linux command line video series. In this video, we will cover the steps in the partitioning and formatting of a media device using the FDisk and MKFS tools. Whenever you have a media device, whether a hard drive or a USB drive that has been wiped, you must partition and format that device before it can be used. The tool we will be using for partitioning is called FDisk. And the tool for formatting is called MKFS. Remember that you need to perform both the partitioning step and the formatting step. Otherwise, the media device will not be usable. Let's take a look at the drives connected to our system by using the ls block command. So I'm going to do ls block dash capital S. This will show us all the devices that are hooked up to our system. We have one hard drive connected to the system called slash dev slash SDA. Let's take a more detailed look by using the disk type command, which reports the formats of the partitions on that drive. So I'm going to do disk type of slash dev slash SDA. And this is going to hit an error saying permission denied. So this reminds us that we need to perform this function as root as we are accessing a disk. So I'm going to hit control P to get the previous line back and then control A to go to the beginning of the line and add sudo. So now we see our drive SDA and we see that it is a block device that is about 30 gigs in size. And it is also indicated as a blank disk medium. So that, that means there are no file systems. It does not necessarily mean that the disk is wiped because this command only looks at the beginning of the drive. So it does not make a definitive determination of a wiped drive. Let's go ahead and see about creating a new partition to our drive. The tool fdisk allows a user to create and remove partitions. The tool can be run in the interactive mode where the tool will be prompting the user for action or in the list mode where the requested data is displayed on the screen. So let's go ahead and use fdisk to create a partition on this blank drive. So I'm going to do sudo fdisk of slash dev slash f sda. So this is a very polite command, as they say, welcome. And it says, gives us the version of 2.34 on this version of uh, Kane that we're using. It also tells you that changes will remain in memory only until you decide to write them. And lastly, as the drive does not have a recognized partition table, a new DOS disk label was created by default. Since we are new to this command, let's type M for help to see what actions are available. The actions include toggling the bootable flag for DOS partitions, deleting and adding new partitions, printing out the partition table, writing the table to disk and exit, quit without saving changes, and creating new label or GPT and DOS. Next step, I recommend always doing a print of the partition table to verify that you're looking at the correct drive. In this case, we see that slash dev slash SDA is a 32 gig hard disk with certain disk model, sector size, and lastly, the disk label of DOS, and then a unique disk identifier. Let's walk through how to create a DOS MBR partitioning scheme, even though it's already created. We're going to type O at the command line. And here, our objective for this exercise is to create three partitions on this media device. So the first thing we're going to do is type N for new partition. And it will ask you whether you want to do a primary partition or an extended partition. 
When you get asked this question, we are going to use primary as that is the most common usage for forensics when we are creating a staging drive. It will ask you to pick a partition number from one to four. So let's just pick the default, which should be one. Next, it's gonna ask you where the first sector of your partition is gonna be. And I usually take the default settings because the computer has already pre-calculated that to be the first available sector. For the last sector, since we want a 10 gig partition, we're gonna type plus 10 G. You can specify sizes using letters like K, M, G, T, and P, which stands for kilo, mega, gigs, terabytes, and petabytes. We're gonna say plus 10 G. So let's take a look at what we have so far by typing P for print. The top section remains the same as before as we made no changes to it. But now we see that we have one partition named slash dev slash SDA1. It starts at sector 2048 and ends in sector 20973567. Which totals 20971529 sectors for the entire partition. So now we know that it has a size of around 10 gigs and uses the default type of Linux. Let's change the file system type to NTFS. We are going to type the T command to change the type. Now we can hit the capital L to view the entire list of possible codes. As you can see, there are a lot of file system types. The common ones are seven for NTFS and XFAT, 83 for Linux, B for FAT32, and AF is usually used for HFS+. So let's go ahead and type 7 for NTFS, and then after that, we're going to type P for print to take a look at what we have so far. So that confirms what we have seen, one partition using the NTFS partitioning scheme. Let's create a second partition. So let's type N for new, P for primary. And then for partition number, we're going to use number two, since there is already an existing number one. Two is the next available. We are going to take the first default sector, which is the first one available. And for the last sector, we're going to put down plus 10 G for a 10 gig partition. So let's take a look at what we have so far by typing P for print we see that we have now two partitions. Let's change the partition type to ext4. Note that the hex code of 83, which is Linux, covers ext2, ext3, and ext4. So I'm going to type T to change the type. And then for partition number, I'm going to type 2. And then for hex codes, I'm going to choose 83. And let's take a look at what we have so far by typing P for print. We have confirmation that we have a second partition, which is also 10 gigs. And this one is slated for a EXT file system. Now let's create a third partition. We're going to type N for new. And then we're going to type P for primary. Then we're going to type number three, which is the default. For the first sector, I'm going to take the default which is the first available sector. And for the last sector, I'm going to use the default of hitting enter to use up the rest of the drive. Let's take a look at what we have so far by typing P for print. Now we see we have three partitions. Let's go ahead and change the partition type for this third partition to FAT32. So we're going to start by typing T for type. When prompted for a partition number, we're going to put 3. And then for hex code, I'm going to select B Bravo for FAT32. 
Let's take a look at what we have so far by typing P for print. So we see that we have the three partitions and the third one, and it is going to use FAT32 as a file system. The next step, we're going to save the partition table changes. Note that with FDisk, you must save the changes with the W command. Otherwise, all changes will be discarded if you just quit. Let's verify that we have successfully completed what we set out to do. Let's run the disk type command to verify the partition table was changed. We're going to type sudo disk type of slash dev slash sda. Now we see here that we have a DOS MBR partitioning map. There are three partitions. The first one is a 10 gig partition with this many sectors and this 2048 as the starting point. And we can also see that it is meant to be a NTFS file system. One thing to note is that we see the phrase blank disk medium. This is usually a hint that the partition does not have a file system on there. Because we have only created the partition, but we need to complete the second part and put a file system to it. The last step of FDisk did not format the partition. It merely denoted that a certain file system is meant to be formatted into that partition. Partition 2 is a 10 gigabyte partition of so many sectors and that sector offset. And we see that it's meant to be a Linux file system as the blank disk medium hints that there is no file system there. Lastly, partition 3 has a certain size, certain offset, and is also meant to have a FAT32 file system, but there is no file system yet because of the blank disk medium. So how do we get a file system into the partitions? The MKFS set of tools allow the user to format a partition with a specific file system. You can type MKFS followed by the tab key to have the command line file complete and show you what other file systems can be created. Common types of file systems include ext2, ext3, ext4, hfs+, ntfs, xfat, and vfat. Let's use mkfs.ntfs to format the first partition. We're going to type mkfs.ntfs dash capital Q, capital L, CLI underscore NTFS slash dev slash SDA1. The mkfs.ntfs command has a lot of options, so you can look them up in the man page if you want to see what they are. The dash Q and dash L are the most commonly ones I use. Dash capital Q is for quick formatting. If we don't use a quick format, it will wipe the drive, which will take quite a long time. Dash L is for volume label. And make sure that the partition you want to format is specified. Otherwise, the entire device will be formatted, which may not be what you want. Lastly, you need to add sudo because you're executing a command that needs root level access. mkfs.ntfs runs pretty fast and it's one of the most polite tools as it tells you to have a nice day when it's done. Let's use disk type to double check that the first partition was formatted properly. We do a sudo disk type of slash dev sda. Now, instead of the line blank disk medium, we see this section now that confirms that there is an NTFS file system there. The mkfs.ntfs command has a lot of options, so you can look them up in the man page. So we can do man mkfs.ntfs. So there is a ton of options. Like I said, the ones that I use is dash Q for quick format and dash L followed by 
the text of what you want to label that volume. Let's use the mkfs.ext4 tool to format the second partition. So we're going to do sudo mkfs.ext4 dash capital L cli underscore ext4 slash dev slash sda2. Make sure the partition you want to format is specified. In this case, we are looking at the second partition, so that would be sda2. mkfs.ext4 takes a little bit longer to run than mkfs.ntfs, but here we see what the output looks like when it is successful. Let's use this type to double check that the second partition was formatted properly. So we do a sudo this type of slash dev sda. Now, instead of the blank disk medium, we see this section that confirms that there is an ext4 file system there with the volume name that was specified and it got a UUID created and so forth. The mkfs.ext4 command has a lot of options, so you can look them up in the man page if you want to see what they are. You can do man mkfs.ext4. Make sure you understand that the options are different between this command and those from mkfs.ntfs. They may have the same letter, but they may stand for different things. Let's use the mkfs.vfat to format the third partition. So I'm going to type sudo mkfs.vfat dash lowercase n and then cli underscore fat32 of slash dev slash sda3. You can use this type to double check that the hard drive was partitioned and formatted properly. Can type sudo this type slash dev slash sda. Now, instead of the line blank disk medium, we see this section that confirms that there is an FAT32 file system there with the volume name that we specified, cli underscore FAT32. The mkfs.vfat command has a lot of options, and you can look them up by using the man page man of mkfs.vfat. The common one I use is dash lowercase n for volume name. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video where we looked at using the fdisk tool to partition a device and then the mkfs set of tools to format a partition. Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time!